Hello and welcome back. You're watching the India Today Group Cicero Post Poll Findings. I'm about to put out now the results of the India Today Group Post Poll Survey. These are the final numbers that have been adjusted till the end of the exit poll. Let's start straight from the top. This is the one figure everyone's been waiting for. Cicero and the India Today Group are projecting that Narendra Modi will be India's next Prime Minister. The NDA in its current avatar without needing new allies is likely to cross 272 plus minus 11. The UPA is going to come down from 206 to about 115 giving the Congress its worst ever performance and the others are likely to be at 156 plus minus 6. So the big story in tomorrow's newspapers and you're seeing it on your screen right now is that the NDA is likely to get a simple majority by itself without needing additional allies even though the RSS and the BJP have indicated that Modi will try and bring more partners on board. I want to introduce our guests for this program, Dr. Ashok Lahiri, our lead cephologist Dhananjay Joshi from Cicero. He's been leading the field team that's been putting these numbers to get together. We've got Dr. Subramaniam Swami from the BJP, not looking as happy as I thought he might. Uh, that's his smile. Okay, great. Nalini Singh, Tavleen Singh, Sadhanand Dhume and Krishnanand. Thank you all very much for joining us. Let's start with the big numbers. And we've also got at this time Tanvir Sadik representing the National Conference and ally of the Congress. The closest thing to the Congress that's appeared on the television screen this evening. Tanvir, welcome. <coughs> Achut Yagnik joining us from Ahmedabad. And we've got Keshava Rao, former member of the Congress, now with the TRS, I'm sure, quite relieved with the fact that he took the right decision according to the exit poll numbers, at least. Let's dive straight into our numbers. And I want Dr. Subramanian Swami to give us his sense of 272 plus minus 11. Uh, that's a good number. You seem to be coming back to power. Well, the coming back to power is, uh, is uh, what has been projected. If you start looking at the trend from uh, September last year and look at all the polls and you project, project them on a graph, uh, we were expecting that anyway. But I think we will be closer to 300 than 272. Okay. I want you to explain that, Dr. Lairi. How is it that things could change? 272 plus minus 11 means 283. Uh, there are some polls that are predicting that they could end up closer to 300. There are some that are going down to 249. What could change? Why is this range starting from about 249 going up to about 302? The reason is the sampling error. You know, you go to, uh, say, out of crores of voters, you only go to a few. You choose your sample very carefully. But still, when you do quality control, for example, in a bulk factory, you take a few bulbs and test it and then say, yeah, the probability of a bulb being wrong is 0.00001%. But zero, that 0.0001% 0, 0. can give you a large uh, problem. So here, polls can never be the same. And their methodology is different. Vote to seat conversion is different. Okay. But the biggest news that I take from this, before the polls, the main fear was a fractured government and an unstable government. What we are getting from the Cicero India Today poll is that it's going to be a stable government. The NDA will not need partners from outside the alliance to keep a government stable. To, it's actually, to me, it's not really a material difference whether they get 272, they get 268, or they, they get 284. The big story is... Narendra Modi is likely is to the be prime India's minister. next Prime Minister. Correct. Dhananjay, you've looked very closely at the exit poll numbers for today. 41 seats, very crucial seats in UP and in Bihar. What is that exit poll telling you? Because the rest of it is post poll. Right. Today's was the exit poll. What's the flavor that you picked up by looking just at the exit poll numbers? Well, in these 41 constituencies, we conducted the exit poll in 144 locations. And uh, we got a robust sample. And what, what one observed is that the trend has been that the BJP has been on the rise. In Eastern UP, the BJP seems to be doing very well today, better than earlier phases. Eastern UP might well be like Western UP, uh, which is uh, very much in favor of the BJP. Uh, a similar story in Bihar, 
Bengal is slightly different, but the Trinamool Congress in Bengal is doing very well. So the trend that we had uh, captured in our pre-polls and in the earlier phases of the post-poll seems to be magnified over here. And you're saying it's extending yes. in favor of the BJP? Or of the winning the party, Eastern, I would say. Right. The winning bandwagon effect coming right. into play over here. Right. I want to introduce our guest, Madhukar Jaitley from the Samajwadi party is also joining us. But first I want to go across to Tanvir Sadik, representing the UPA. The UPA crashing from 206 uh, to 116. Now that is a big, big blow for the UPA. Now how, where does that leave the UPA? Where does that leave the Congress? Where does that leave Rahul Gandhi? Where does that leave UPA 3 and the dreams that the Congress had of coming back to power once more? Rahul, uh, you may you may you may wish that this would be correct, but I I don't think the exit poll is correct right now because if you if you look at 2004 and 2009, uh, the same way uh, the new channels and almost all the newspapers had written off the UPA and said that you know we'll lose, but then we sprung back and then uh, the same thing will, will happen now. If you remember, even the, during the starting of the elections. You gave BJP and uh, NDA uh, a clear majority or a clear lead in South, but this time you're writing them off in South and saying they'll just get seats here. And plus UP, uh, UP and Bihar, you're writing off Samajwadi Party, Mayawati, Congress, you're giving everything to BJP and, uh, and its allies, and I don't think that's true. I mean, yes, maybe I, I would w want to wish them best of luck, but I, I'm sorry, it's not correct, and I don't think uh, the figures are right. The figures seem unlikely to be right and that's natural and only expected from the party that's shown to be crashing. Madhukar Jaitley, from the Samajwadi party's perspective, you tried very hard to keep Modi out. He seems to have stormed Uttar Pradesh. There was talk of whether there is a Modi wave. In the end, there seems to have been, at least from these exit poll numbers, a very big Modi wave in Uttar Pradesh. Sir. Whom are you asking? Yes, sir. You. You see, the exit polls, yes, yes, as the, my friend earlier was telling, have uh, have been definitely proved uh, proved uh, incorrect on several occasions in the past. Can I request you to turn that television screen that's playing in the background off, please? You will be able to hear me much better if it's just you and, and me and turn actually, that Actually, the fact that the, the fact that the, the fact that the Muslim votes, which dis, despite the BJP trying to uh, create a divide from Muzaffarnagar to other places also, and they tried to do this in Varanasi also, which they could not succeed, the Muslims have by and large voted for the Samajwadi party. And even in today's Azamgarh poll, where the BJP's prime ministerial candidate held his meeting in Azamgarh against Mr. Mulayam Singh Yadav. Today it has been proved in the poll conducted today and the polling which has been held today that the Muslims and the Yadavs and by and large stood behind Mr. Mulayam Singh Yadav. Therefore, the exit poll results that you are, that you are showing today on your, on your screen is definitely going to prove wrong on the 16th of May and the results of Uttar Pradesh, which we feel as a Samajwadi party, that the BSP and the Congress, which is going to lose, is only going to be the number that is going to be added to the BJP kitty, not the Samajwadi party, which is going to be able to retain its foothold in the end of the day. At the okay, end of let the me day. give our viewers a sense of the national vote share projections, because this really brings out the quantum of the fall for the Congress and the UP and just the extent the BJP and the NDA have picked up. Let's start with the UPA which is down to 26% uh, vote share from last time. Uh, last time they had about 29% of the votes, they are now down to 26. The NDA is at 38, now that's a big jump again because last time 19 plus 8 is what they had had. This time there's a big jump. So what the BJP is actually seeing is about a 14% jump in the BJP's own fortunes. A 14% jump in the BJP's own fortunes is very big, Dr. Lairi. And this is the best the BJP has ever done, much better than it did under Atal Bihari Vajpayee. Rahul, you're absolutely right. 
I was looking at the history of the Congress Party. The worst it has ever done is 28.3% vote share in 1999. And the worst it has done in terms of seats is 154 in 1977. And by both these standards, I'm taking two different years. 114 in 1998. 90, yeah, absolutely right, 114. 77 is stuck in my mind because she lost, Indira Gandhi lost the election. So 114 and 28.30. It's worse than that. And the best that the BJP ever did was 182 seats and 28.75 in 1999, 23.75 in 1999. So what we are seeing is that the BJP has broken its own record and the Congress has gone through the floor in terms of its worst performance. Have we seen this kind of swings before? Yes, we have. But at a national scale, this is unprecedented. A 14% swing in favor of the BJP. That's a big, big, big swing, uh, Krishnanand. Uh, in comparison with, this is, this is the Modi wave. People were saying, how big is the Modi wave? Is it just a ripple? Is it a tsunami? A 14% wave? If that were to be the final outcome, how would you qualify? Well, I think, you know, I mean, it's, it's the Congress that is actually slipping and slipping very decisively. And, I mean, it, it, it happened, it, this whole thing began in 1989 when the Congress started losing uh, social segments to various other parties. And by 93, they, were, they lost a huge segment to the BJP. I see actually sort of, you know, the pattern that began in 1989 consolidating today. The Congress is actually losing its clout. I, I actually think it's the... It's, it's much more than that. It's much more than the Congress declining. It's the BJP breaking very dramatic new ground, both in terms of regions. You see them picking up vote share in places that have tra traditionally been weak in the east and in the south of India, and in terms of new social groups. You can see polling where they're doing well with the OBCs, they're doing well with SCs, they're doing well with STs, certainly doing better than Congress in all major demographics except for the Muslims. So it's a, it's a very dramatic moment for the BJP. It's a pivotal moment where they have emerged as the leading party in India by every measure. The question now is, can they consolidate and hold this? Tavli. Yeah, no, I'm really puzzled about why we keep denying that there was a Modi wave. Do you know, I mean, to go back to 1989 and say, oh, they were losing social groups in 1989. For goodness sake, you know, well, this is 2014. No, 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 my only point in the is past in 19, three in years, one minute. 1998 and 99, it was an Atul Bihari Vajpayee wave. There was in no wave. Much bigger. There was this no much wave. Bigger. There was, there was, that, that was 25, 26%. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if they end up at 23%, that is at least 7% no, bigger okay, than the can I, can I, can I, can I, can I complete? Can I complete what I'm saying? Anybody who isn't looking at this election with blinkers on will see that governance, development and change were big issues because in the past three years under the, under the benign governance of the Congress party, we, the economy collapsed. And when the economy collapses, jobs go. You've got young people, what was it? One million new young people coming into the workforce every month, right? There are no jobs. You can feel that in any city. Anyone who travels, just go to the, your local bazaar and ask people. There was a wave, in fact, such a wave that if I were Narendra Modi, I'd be quite scared with the aspirations that have been risen because they think it's going to change in minutes. Rahul, okay, Rahul, I want to Rahul, just give me a moment. I want to build on this, but I want to put out the numbers for Uttar Pradesh. Let's just have the vote share percentages for Uttar Pradesh followed by the seat share percentages for Uttar Pradesh because the quantum of the Modi wave really depends on the outcome in Uttar Pradesh. What do the numbers look like? Can we have those numbers up on our screen, please? Let's start with the Congress uh, and let's take the Congress's vote share first. In Uttar Pradesh, the Congress had a 26% vote share last time. That's when you combine the allies with it. When you combine the RLD with it, this time it's down to about 11. By itself, the Congress had 18, now down to 10. That's a loss of 8%. The BJP, and this to my mind, is one of the biggest stories of this election. The BJP has been able to push up its vote share from 18% to 39%, that figure on the screen needs to be changed, from 18% to 39%, that is a 21.3% gain in favor of the BJP. That is a massive, massive swing in favor 
of BJP in favor of Narendra Modi. The Samajwadi Party, which had the Samajwadi Party had about the Samajwadi Party had 27 percent of the vote share. That's now at 19. That's a loss of 8 percent of the vote share. This is the BSP numbers uh, which are up on your screen right now. Can we have the SP numbers, please? Okay, these are the Samajwadi Party numbers now uh, coming up on your screen. Okay, we're taking it right from the top. The Congress from 18 down to 10. That's a loss of 8. The BJP from 18 to 39. That's a gain of 21.3. The SP from 23 to 22. That's a loss of 1. Uh, the BSP figures coming up on your screen now from 27 to 19. That's a loss of 8. Uh, let's see how this converts into seats, please. Let's see how this converts into seats. In Uttar Pradesh, uh, the Congress, which had 21, now slated to crash between 3 and 4. Uh, the BJP, which had 10 seats, expected to increase that to between 47 and 55. That's a big jump in favor of the BJP. The SP, which had 23, now expected to crash to between 10 and 14. And the BSP, between 6 and 10 from 20. Now, Madhukar Jaitley is going to contest these, but explain these figures, Dhananjay, in terms of the vote share of the BJP and how is it that it's turning up such an impressive strike rate in Uttar Pradesh? Well, uh, the BJP has been the only party which in the last two to two and a half decades has crossed 36 percent votes. Uh, and uh, this was in 98 when it got 57 seats. This time around, it has actually crossed its own record. And there is a large, and when we are going to look at the vote call rounds, we are going to realize that there is a big upper caste consolidation in favor of the BJP. But it is not only an upper caste consolidation. There is an element of aspiration which cuts across communities. This time around, the BJP seems to be getting a substantial proportion of Muslim votes, a substantial proportion of uh, Dalit votes. It might be well the lowest proportion of the Jata votes for Mayavati this time. It might be the lowest proportion of Yadav votes for Mulayam Singh Yadav. So there is this big consolidation that the BJP uh, is doing across communities, across regions. So, so in that sense, Madhukar Jaitley, do you think the inability to forge a secular alliance or a united front to take on Modi is what has proved to be the undoing of the SP, the BSP and the Congress in Uttar Pradesh. Unlike Bihar where he had one Lalu versus one Modi and thereby he was able to give a tougher fight. Since that didn't happen, does that explain how the opposition vote got fragmented helping Narendra Modi and the BJP consolidate in UP? You see, I completely agree that because of the three-cornered contest against the BJP, there could be a division of Muslim votes or some other votes against the BJP. But I am surprised to see Mr. Joshi's uh, argument that the BJP has been able to get some Muslim votes, which has never happened in the, in the, even in the past, or I am not able to convince myself as to how would the Muslims would have voted for the BJP in Uttar Pradesh. But this is an important which is point. In the this is an important point. Bhumi, Ashok Lahiri, Ram Jan Bhumi, Babri Masjid are old arguments and they've existed. However, uh, the Cicero opinion poll shows that the BJP and its allies are picking up 13 percent of the Muslim votes, up from 7. This is what the pre poll survey showed as well, and I was very skeptical at that time too wondering why would Muslims in UP vote for BJP. But that is what the post poll survey indicates. Is there then a different reality to what has been projected that some Muslims at least don't think of Modi as the enemy? See Rahul, since you brought up the question of pre poll and post poll, what I find very interesting, the difference between pre poll and post poll is BJP has gone from strength to strength. There has been a late swing in favor of the BJP. Second, the SP and BSP, which is losing more. It seems that the BSP is losing less votes than the SP, but BSP is losing more seats than the SP. It depends on the distribution of where the votes are distributed. On the question of Muslims, I think there may be 14 percent is not a large number. That's something like one in seven. It's perfectly possible that the development sutra that Mr. Modi has been uh, sort of promoting Vikash Purush rather than Vinash Purush that may have struck a 
No, or because if you were to watch the, the national television narrative, Tavleen, you would go back thinking that Muslims hate Modi, they're very scared of Modi, which is what most people who would have travelled anywhere in Uttar Pradesh would have picked up as well. But every poll has shown that there is a certain percentage of Muslims, not too many, that are willing to consider voting for Modi. Okay, I'll tell you what I picked up in both UP and Bihar, that educated Muslims were beginning to think again about their so-called demon Mr. Modi. And part of it was because they felt that he was unfairly demonized. You know, everyone can be demonized for riots. That was one argument. The other thing I noticed was that younger Muslims would suddenly say in the middle of, you know, the thing and say, nobody's done anything for him. Okay, Tanvir so Sadiq, because Omar Abdullah is the one person who's been saying that Muslims would never accept Modi. Or there are several leaders who've built that specter. That, at least the poll shows, is not entirely true. It's true in great part, but not entirely true. So, so this is one of the reasons I don't believe in exit polls. I don't think even 7% would have voted for Mr. Narendra Modi. I mean, nobody can forget what, uh, what happened in Gujarat. After that, even even for once, we would consider what the, what the lady before me is saying. Uh, but let's let's agree that you know he is the same person who rejected wearing a skull cap. He he is the same person who who did who he is the same person who fought his election on communal, communalizing politics. I mean, he's the one who has been keeping the Muslims uh, uh, quite afar from himself. So I don't think Muslims would ever forget Gujarat. How about Bhagalpur, sir? Uh, there was no Narendra Modi at that time. In 1989, officially no, 1,000 I mean, Muslims were killed. Unofficially, 2,500 Muslims were killed. That Who is, was there? See, that's there was a Congress government in Bihar and a Congress government in New Delhi. A person who doesn't give even one mandate. No, you even, cannot go on and answer. One person is not a MLA or a minister in his cabinet. You no, think he, Muslims would vote no, for him? I Why would they vote for him? This is an old debate. This is an old debate. Who doesn't even care for the sentiments of the community? Several no, months have been taken up by this poll. television yeah, debate. We are putting out Southern and the results of the poll. Regardless of what Tanvir Sadiq yeah. thinks, regardless of what Madhukar Jaitley thinks, the poll shows that 13% of the Muslims in Uttar Pradesh have voted for Narendra Modi. Now, sir, Dr. Lahiri is right that this in, in and of itself, this is not a huge number. It's about one in seven. But you've got to put this in perspective. In 2009, the BJP got 3% of the Muslim vote. After this demonization, or intense criticism of Mr. Modi, for him to still get, go from 3% to 13%, even if this is in Uttar Pradesh, shows that at some level, two things are working. One, the mantra of development and this election being about development. And second, the fact is that he has made gestures to the Muslim community. He has moderated his rhetoric. He has spoken in terms of Muslim prosperity in Gujarat. He touched that Colonel Nazimuddin's feet as a Muslim patriot. So he has gone that extra mile compared to his past rhetoric. It has not worked with the majority, but it has clearly worked with some people. Uh, Rahul, may I also yes, say Krishna that if you got 39 percent, just once, I'll just finish. 39 percent, if uh, BJP is polling 39 percent, then uh, is the demonization of Amit Shah also warranted to this extent? This is my question. No, Rahul, I think, you know, I mean, we just need to look at this in perspective. After the 1984 riots, gory in them, I mean, terrible. The Congress, after all, spent the elections. So it's not that sort of, you know, I mean, I mean, we, we look after at... After demonizing look at every, the six, the Congress campaign... No, let me complete, let me complete. No, so well, the, you should, I'm just, I'm not... No, 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 let me complete. This is not an argument, I'm just mentioning to you that the campaign was based on the six being the enemy of the, of the nation. Shall Please I? remember yeah, that. Go on, go Shall on. I? Yeah, go on. So, yeah, don't I mean, this, worry this, about it. Of course, this, you can this, speak. This whole, tro this whole business of stereotyping a community. Uh, I mean, if 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 actually sort of you know, I mean, the Muslims will not vote for Modi's to be to be a fact uh, etched in rock. I mean, we should also then say, like, you know, all the Hindus will definitely vote. So I think you know, elections and democracy are much larger than identity. Identity does play a uh, role. And you know, it's. I mean, let's let's also be a little little humble. I think 14 percent, as uh, Mr. Lahiri said in the beginning. I mean, we, we we could have gone to the wrong samples. I mean, after all, you have a Shanawaz Hussain who is in the BJP. You have a Mukhtar Ansari who is in the BJP. He's not going to demonize Modi. And if that is a sample that's going to be projected, I mean, there are there are several of these aspects. No, no. But then both the polls would not have picked up the same right. thing. Yeah. I need to thank Krishna Anand for the time being.